interviewing top talent in movies, television, sports, and music, leaders, entrepreneurs, and experts. Broadcasting out of New York, New York, Manchester, Los Angeles. As a mentor, life, and career coach, I help others, athletes, actors, and people of all walks of life solve the problems they face by introducing balance and routines that would otherwise leave them stuck and overthinking, paralyzed, unable to reach their goals. They look for engaging, rewarding lives, and I think they deserve that. Today, I invite you to join me on my radio show to learn from my guests and I how you can be more resilient and strong. I empower people who struggle with confusion or feel stuck in soulless, non-fulfilling situations. I help them find calm and claim their authentic self in their career path or personal life so they can live to their fullest potential. As a motivational speaker for businesses, schools, resorts, and communities, I speak on topics of achieving success and living a mentally healthy lifestyle, featuring topics from my Power My Life program within my revolutionary impact, influence, and income academy. I inspire the world as a radio journalist, author, life coach, career coach, resilience expert, mental health advocate, and most recently as a society writer for Transatlantic Today magazine. So happy that you joined me. Let's get rolling. You don't just have to go through it. You can grow through it. Good morning, and thank you for joining Resilient You with Alicia Pisani. On our show each week, we have guests that come on and talk about topics of resilience. Today, my special guest is coming to us from um, the western side of the United States. She's in California. Her name is Shakti Sharma. And it's a name that you don't want to forget because she has great things in the works. She is the co-founder of Spiritual Alignment. She's a feminine embodiment coach. She leverages her intuitiveness to support women in creating alignment with their mind, body, emotions, and soul to fuel empowering transformations. And I can't tell you how thankful I am to have you here today, Shakti. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here today. It's such a honor to sit with you <laughs> and have this conversation today. Yes, I, you know, when we first met uh, over the past year, from the very first interaction with you, I was amazed by the intuitiveness. I think I said a few sentences and you right away picked up on things in and, and we had connected in terms of a of a leadership, right? Women leadership and business. Mm -hmm. So I just want to put out there for our listeners, any woman, if you're uh, in the process of starting your own business, if you are looking to branch out, if you are just looking for clarity, peace within your soul, you just want to connect with her. So Shakti, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself about your offering and how you got here yes thank you so much for asking that question let's just rewind a little bit um pregnancy for any woman is one of the most cherished times of for her in her whole entire life and that wasn't the case for my mom my mom's pregnancy was full of hardships Mm -hmm. because she lost several babies, four to be precise. And after losing that many babies, she conceived me, she had me, and she lived with the fear of losing me every single day of those eight months of her life. I was a little premature. <laughs> and I was her rainbow baby. And somehow I made it. Somehow mm -hmm. I made it. Somehow I came alive. Somehow I fought through all against, against all the odds and mm -hmm. came alive. So as a baby, I learned how to be resilient very early on. 
Mm, she, yes. really, she really stand in what I want. I learned that. And at the same time, just me be, being alive, just me breathing um, wasn't enough. It wasn't everything. It, yeah, I have life. Um, but it felt like throughout my childhood, I seek something more. I seek something more, more love, more connection. I was a very emotionally sensitive child, um, very empathic. And um, at the same time, just the way everything transpired, how my childhood uh, experience shaped, I learned to turn off my empathy and my intuitiveness, my sensitivity. And I took that lesson of resiliency from the womb and really emerged as this strong woman who is not faced by her emotions. And over time, I, that really helped me in one way, right? It helped me, um, you know, do my engineering, go to top grad school in the States, Carnegie Mellon. It helped me do my MBA at, at uh, University of Chicago Booth School of Business, again, a top school. It helped me create a very successful corporate career in banking world. Um, yet, it, that level, that definition of resiliency really, uh, really was not always fulfilling. The achievements were fulfilling, yes. But at the end of the day, when I would just be with myself, I would always notice this kind of void in my heart, this void that just was there and things that I would do, things I would, things that I would accomplish would make me happy for a moment. And then what? Then I still have to live with me. <laughs> so um, my journey is really about taking that definition of resiliency that I was born with giving it a whole new spin and coming up with a whole new working definition that really met me in my life. So just a little bit of that twist in the story, um, you know, fast forwarding um, 2014, I was finishing up my MBA. Um, I was married at that point. I had the management consulting job that I really wanted. And I was pregnant with my firstborn. Um, I was about two months away from giving birth, my first birth ever. And something happened during that time, which I, you know, in hindsight, hindsight is always 2020. In hindsight, I can say that was my spiritual awakening. But at that time, it was the perfect storm um, that brewed for me, which is um, something very trivial happened. Um, my husband and I um, had a conflict and, you know, pregnancy hormones were raging. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, that hurts so bad. I cannot take this anymore. And I uh, decided to leave my home. And this is me again, at that time, eight months pregnant, having this baby in my belly. I checked into a hotel, this was like five in the morning, and I was sitting there alone and just crying, letting all my emotions just come up, unleash, and I'm just sitting alone, crying, these tubs of tears, and I'm like, whoa, this is so hurtful. Why am I here? Why am I so alone? Why do I feel this level of disconnection? And at that point, it's like these flashbacks start to come up, flashbacks of my parents' marriage, flashbacks. Um, my parents have the hardest time getting along with each other, and that is what I learned from their marriage. Flashbacks of a heartbreak I had uh, prior to meeting my husband, and that heartbreak was really ugly. It ended up in um, this ex-partner of mine cheating on me, um, and at that time, I learned a lot how close my heart was to him, to everyone around me. There were just many, many, many flashbacks in that moment that had me 
cry even more. <laughs> and it felt like in that moment, there was a deep cleansing taking place for me. It, mm. it, it, you know what I mean? Like sometimes as women, when we really cry, mm. you know, give ourselves permission to feel all the pain that we have suppressed in ourselves in the name of being strong, appearing strong, being perceived as strong. And when you finally give yourself that permission to really have it, okay, no, I am not bypassing this. I am not hiding this about me anymore. I'm actually sitting right here present with my emotions. That is the process I went through. And I remember at the end of that process, this like inner voice that spoke to me. It's like, Shakti, you have experience a lot of pain a lot of pain you're sensitive and the only thing it said was learn intuition mm -hmm. learn the art of intuition so that you can get to know yourself so that you can stop repeating these old patterns that are so held within you that you can stop these from being carried forward and choose something new, something, a different reality for yourself. And at that point, I didn't really understand all of this, right? I just understood, okay, learning tuition. And I did, I did. It, it was so undeniably, you know, loud voice that I knew I need to honor me in this way. I need to stop all this. I need to just really take care of me. And this is wow. how nine and a half years ago, my healing began. Wow. So, so that's a, a just amazing story that you've shared. So thank you for being honest and, you know, putting that out there. It really helps our listeners to understand where you came from and how your, the tools you provide would be so relevant. Uh, and I don't know if you know this, but I also was a premature baby. I was one pound, 11 and a quarter ounces. So I was the strong fighter. I also survived and all my life, you know, it was like, I was the fighter. I was the fighter. And so I can really relate with a lot of what you were saying there. Um, and I think that, you know, a lot of women, they, they do what either what they're told or they do what there is expected of them and I know that's going to open up a whole lot okay but today is women's equality day so we have to touch on this subject of women's equality um so when you have well before we go into what your feelings are on that um subject I want to ask you you have um You've helped uh, feminine leaders. You've helped individuals with uh, personal growth, healing, and empowerment. Um, how can people find you? I want to put that up in the beginning of this interview so that people can go out and connect with you. Yeah, people can. Um, I, I have a very genuine love for people. I just love people and their stories and who they are. I would love to connect with people. People can find me at spiritualalignment.com. That is my brand. That is the brand I co-founded with my husband. And we are building a center for inner transformation in Northern California, about three and a half hours outside of Bay Area in the Sierra Nevada mountains. And we have 320 acres of property here. We have creeks and rivers and mountain tops, and we have an indoor facility already. And we're building more bigger space on the top of the mountain that we have here. But yeah, people can find me at spiritualalignment.com or they can write me a note at shakti at spiritualalignment.com. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for that. So if you are a woman looking for a mentor, looking for clarity, looking for personal growth. If you're ready to face what you've been through and reach a place of healing and then become empowered, you definitely want to reach out to Shakti. That's S-H-A-K-T-I. 
at spiritualalignment.com. So, okay, so we are uh, back to the topic of women's equality. So you and I, as premature babies, we had belief systems, maybe, that we were uh, acting according to. We had, you know, things that people looked to us for, right? So what are some of the things you might do to help women, um, you know, reach their equality, whether in their home life, in their relationships, uh, at work, how how would you um, help some of the women in that area? Yeah, this is such a great question to really hone in on because I think as women, we are so alike in in so many regards, and it just feels like you know, in my experience working with women, I feel like there's a common thread, which I, you earlier touched on a little bit, is the expectation thread. Um, a lot of the women, most women out there are expected to serve. They are expected to take care of their families. There's a lot of emotional labor that we provide to our families, to our working environment. And it that expectation has us by default kind of turn off this connection with our hearts, with this connection with our womb around what is it that you want. And even for me, um, all my life, I was so busy meeting expectations for everyone. And it felt like I became this like magnet anywhere I be with anyone and have a relationship with anyone, even new people I would meet. And I would feel these expectations on me. And I'm like, whoa, where are these coming from? And over the time healing layer by layer, I realized this was a setup that my soul created for me to really get clear on what is it that you want shakti you have heard mm -hmm. what others are wanting and all the ways you can take care of fifty thousand people in your world but who are you and what is it that you want and mm -hmm. this very subtle unconscious expectation placed on women culturally that women have to meet everybody's little little needs and like everybody's a kid around us and everybody needs like a mommy and we jump into this role of being a mom whether we're talking to our manager or co-worker or you know a sibling or a distant friend we're always like looking for how do we meet their needs and all the empathy we have all this nurturing we have leaks out of our space and mm -hmm. if we just could turn it around all that empathy all that nurturing all that ability to emotionally validate ourselves love ourselves we would be unstoppable force because that is all what each one of us needs this internal validation as a woman that yes you are worthy you are enough yeah that's amazing i when you were speaking about the whole thing of our sub, subtle unconsciousness and that nurturing and how we jump into those roles with people at work at home you don't know how many people i've worked with in my counseling practice that have voiced that concern either they're stuck in a job because they've done this thing so well and they don't put themselves first they don't invest in themselves and so after working with me i'm able to get them out of that place of you know and put themselves first and so it's true that we draw in oftentimes what we've been through, right? So it's so important to have that recognition. And listeners, if you're looking for spiritual alignment, you know, you, you need to really reach out to Shakti. I've said it already, but if you're just tuning in, um, she actually helps you to create that alignment 
that you that you so need in order to reach healing and get to a better place in your life. So Shakti, how how does it feel for your clients when they reach those levels when they work with you? Yeah. Before I hit on that, I want to actually share about my secret sauce here. And, you know, even in my story, just being alive and coming out as a breathing child wasn't enough. Just surviving really wasn't enough. And every time I tried to survive and be like so strong, it brought more pain for me. So my life has taught me to really tap into your heart, tap into my heart to really connect with the spirit of me, spirit that brings me alive, spirit that gives me meaning of why am I even here, spirit that shares with me who am I, what is my purpose here, what makes my heart truly happy here, and how do I get there? And all of that, I was able to really hone in on, discover through my intuition to really close my eyes, be in my meditative space, ask my soul, who am I? Why am I here? What is my purpose? And for me, the way it works with me is I see images, colors, and they mean something. They, they deliver a message to me. And as I started with that process for myself. And now when clients reach out to me, the first thing I do is to take them in their connection with their spirit and help them understand, look, this is what brings you the most fulfillment. This is what brings you most joy. And now let's work through all these layers that stand in between you fully aligning with your spirit you fully aligning with your body, you fully bringing that mind to a space of calmness, that groundedness. And that really opens the way for women to, wow, like Shakti, the way you spoke to me, I felt like I was this, you know, five-year-old little girl that I always was, but I forgot about me. Or the stress of everyday life, us being on the hamster wheel really took over and I couldn't really see that about me or oh my gosh there's so much i'm suppressing inside me that wants to come out so the journey really becomes like unleashing of their who they are their their fullest expression and at that point um whatever situation comes up we just hone in on that for example i was working with one coach and uh we worked for a shorter time frame but during that time frame um, she wanted to have a thriving business and she wanted to really be clear on how can she help people? How can she help clients? And as we hone in on her medicine, her gifts, we came across um, the journey. We came across many situations around her stepdaughter, her husband, where she's been suppressing all that communication inside of her, not being able to set the clear boundaries and trying to navigate her way out of relationship through people pleasing. And somehow, even though we weren't really talking about that, we weren't really intending to go there, but she became such a confident person in her relationships who was able to voice how she felt, validate her feelings, voice how she felt, really create the right boundaries that work for her and be clear on, hey, this is who I am and this is how I can help you, support you, even if you are my stepdaughter or if you are, um, you know, my husband or my mother. And this is what I can do. This is, I'm, I can't do this. And that honesty is so important in relationships when we are willing to be honest with ourselves that is a demonstration of our power. Yes, boundaries. That's a that's a huge topic that people, especially women, oftentimes don't do. And they don't they don't even know that it's a normal thing to do. 
because once you try to set those boundaries or you say no, I mean, I remember the first time when I learned this concept of, of a boundary. And in my situation, it had to have been when I was, after I had become a mother and my child went off to school, I had more time on my hands. I was in between jobs. I knew I wanted to do something. And I had to really put boundaries in place. And, and then only after I did it, did I realize what it was. I thought I was just putting myself first, but when I understood it and I was able to put the words behind it and then have the communication with the people, I was able to, I don't know, I leveled up, honestly. I, I became, like you said, closer to that that goal of who I was spiritually, you know, and when we look back over our decisions and our the relationships in our lives, sometimes you realize it's not healthy, whatever the, you're going through. So, so yeah, boundaries, it's, it's so important. Now I love hearing the journey that you've described. Um, so that gave us some insight into their feelings and when they work with you, they, they would go on that journey. I imagine they would make great changes in their life. So not only healing, but they could actually reach new heights. Is that right? Absolutely. And just in my previous example, the coach I was supporting was able to sign up her first client on our first session, right on the day of our first session. And she signed up another client during our journey and she's walking like a boss these days, <laughs> creating her year long program, um, working with more people that she loved. And she really pivoted from um, really kind of working as a caregiver and educating other caregivers to really, hey, I'm the queen here. Like mm -hmm. I need to follow my heart and I am going to do what feels right in my heart. And it is so important that we do that because our default, and I just wanna be realistic here, our default is to be a nice girl. Mm -hmm. That's how, that's where the most women default to, be nice girls mm -hmm. who avoid every conflict, who uh, do as other people want her to do just so that everybody's okay, mm -hmm. there's less conflict and huh, we can just, you know, live peacefully because, because when we speak our truth, you know, we're gonna be that woman, you know, and there's a very big line of trauma with the witch wound that we all carry very unconsciously in our bodies and our mm -hmm. hearts. So yeah. no one wants to be that, be that woman who yeah. ruffles the feather, you know, who speaks the loudest in the boardroom. And I think it's time that we do the work we are meant to do to rise above this wounding, to really stand in our light and speak our truth. Because we are here in very transitional times to do something big. We're not here, us women, we manifested very difficult childhood. We manifested mm -hmm. difficult births and we are here in standing in our resilience because we are the change bringers on the planet. Mm -hmm. We are not the ones who propagate the same old prophecies. We are here to create new birth. We are the creators here of the new birth, the new paradigm of new definitions of resiliency, which are really tied to you, our hearts, the mm -hmm. ease. It's, it's so beautiful. The, truth, the honesty, the integrity, the yeah. abundance. Yeah. Now, let me ask you. So if there's a young woman listening out there and maybe she's held back by cultural expectations, maybe she is held back by her, her, her own beliefs of not having enough money. Maybe she's held down by not believing in herself because of what she's been told what message would you give her um my message is simple um the first one being even if you do not have any means right now to do anything i want you to take a moment rub your hands 
against each other and put your hands on your heart. Ooh. And give yourself a moment to just breathe. However long that moment is, maybe it takes you a minute to settle down in your body, to come to that quiet space. Maybe it takes you five minutes to get there. But I want you to listen to your heart. Mm. And I want you to ask your heart, what does it need to be happy? What does it need to have that fulfillment, that love that you're really seeking. And I guarantee you, if you are able to settle down, you will have your answer. And if you are not able to settle down, let that be your signal that you can use support right now. Because what it tells me when somebody has a hard time settling in the body is that they don't feel safe and there's something more deeper brewing within them that they need help in, you know, that space being held for them so that they feel more safe connecting with their heart. Mm. Wonderful. Yeah, and anytime you feel you, you know, you want to get support, there, there are many uh, things that will stand in the way. The number one being the pattern of survival. I don't have enough. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough means. People are not going to be there. I am going to be this uh, baby who had to survive. The, our birth script will play out because, you know, it, it was at that time was that testament of strength. We were all asked to, we, we were asked to kind of birth in that testament of strength. And now the times are different. And, um, you know, it's absolutely possible to rise above these deeply ingrained patterns and to claim that support for yourself. Um, thankfully, we, you know, many of us have insurance, uh, you know, now in this day and age, and uh, you can connect with your insurance provider to see how they can support your mental, emotional health. But uh, this is a very basic fundamental right, you know, during these times, especially after COVID, we all need support. We all need to make that our, our well-being a big priority. Yes. Well, thank you for that. I know in the U.S. we can um, make a, a claim with the insurance company uh, as an out-of-network provider for your services. Uh, so that's something else. Now, do you do services online? Yeah. Okay, super. And so now I'm I'm so excited, Shakti. So you've already authenticated yourself as the the thought leader in this industry. So I we we understand, we know that you know what you're doing. We know that you have a great mission here that's aligned with your sole purpose. Tell our listeners about about the center. Do you have any retreat available now or up up and coming? Yeah, so um, I am just last new moon, I was being guided to offer a retreat, um, October 20th to 22nd. And this is a women's only retreat. And we're going to spend a lot of time in the nature, we're going to be eating healthy, vegan, gluten free meals, we're going to be moving our body really opening our bodies. Um, grounding them and going to a creek on our property, uh, which is very feminine. It holds very feminine energy. It, it like flows and has a beautiful pool that we can step into. Um, and then we're gonna be doing some deeper journeys into our subconscious mind to really clear out if, if there's any um, story that's still kind of lingering from the past, really empty that out from our bodies, our wounds, our subconscious minds, so that we can move forward and weave together the visions for the future. And that's coming up in October of this year. And I am planning on building more bigger retreat space on the top of the mountain we, we live on. And um, hopefully it will hold 20 people and we're going to publish a full set of retreat schedule next year. Um, I've also learned to be super selective. Like I'm not planning on keeping my calendar super busy. 
Um, I want to space out my work. I take only two trauma healing clients at a time. And my focus is going more deeper in the quality of my work than to have more people, if that makes sense. So my gift is really holding that safe space and guiding people in a way so that they can meet themselves in the depth of all that is, uh, rather than doing little thing with more people, if that makes any sense to you. Uh, wonderful. That's beautiful because I know with the trauma, you oftentimes do have to go deep and it might take longer. So uh, that's going to appeal to many people. Uh, so in also, do you have any uh, any free offerings that might be available to people online that may not be in your local California area? Absolutely. And my one-on-one -on -one work and group work takes place online as well. And uh, with immersions that can be taken in person as well as online. So yes, I have a free offering called a Clarity and Confidence Breakthrough Session for Women. And um, that is a free session and we just sit down and I hear your vision. I help you crystallize your vision and we create a, a customized healing game plan for you, a journey that will be helpful for you to get where you wanna be. And this is where I really bring together my intuition and my experience and my formulas for um, healing some of these deeper things. I have a bunch of different group programs too, and one of them is called Wild Feminine Leadership, where I work with women in the corporate world and help them unleash their voice and this like visibility so that they can speak confidently in boardrooms. I also have, I also train practitioners um, in activating their intuitiveness so that they can create these juicy transformations for their clientele. Wonderful. Wow, that's oh, so many options, so many things to consider. Um, you know, I know myself, I've been sitting in that boardroom, in that meeting room, and I would, I would think of something, or maybe I would say it in passing, someone else would take credit for the idea, and I would walk away feeling deflated feeling like I didn't have the tools why weren't I being respected in those situations so eventually what happened I stopped doing it I just kept my thoughts to myself fast forward you know 20 years um I'm in a better place but I still hold on to those experiences I still hold on to those feelings about because we didn't really go into the the leadership role, the, the professional side of the house. But as women, we wear so many hats. And I think it's so important to work with a coach like yourself to address all of our issues because they, they're they connected, right? You can't- They're, they're all connected. And, and the sad part, Alicia, is that the feminine leadership is a whole different beast than masculine leadership. Our bodies are different and, and it's very nuanced how women feel confident within themselves. And the, in the world, like I went to business school and I've taken leadership classes. I went through the work corporate world training, um, you know, as senior managers, and, you know, executives, and none of them actually address the nuances of how women speak up. And the reality is women don't operate like men do, but we are expected to operate like men to, again, appear strong. And, and that appearing strong had us bypass a lot of our emotions or cut, disassociate ourselves from our emotions. And the emotions is where our superpower is in stepping into that deeper, intuitiveness stepping into that deeper creativity that deeper magnetism that is how women really rise up as leaders in the world and it's so nuanced and so less understood in our world and this is really what i am here to change this is my mission to really help women recognize your emotions are your superpower 
that is how you step into your leadership and that bypassing and disassociating is so much more harmful to us than than it can ever benefit us yeah and i you know you couldn't be more more right in line with the world today and the timing uh there's so many people trying to reach the definition of who they are and i really feel like there's so many of us who want to have more joy, more freedom from the struggles that we face day to day. So um, the fact that you're doing what you're doing, I myself am doing that in my Carry Your Life program, um, we're, we're going to change the world, Shakti. So we are thank here. you so much. Yes, thank we you so much. <laughs> so, listeners, reach out to Shakti. She can be found at uh, spiritualalignment.com. She is a feminine embodiment coach, leveraging her intuitiveness to support women in aligning with their mind, body, emotions, and soul for empowering transformations. Thank you so much, Shakti, for being with us today on Resilient You. Thank you so much, Alicia. What an honor. Thank you so much for all the work you are doing for the listeners around the world. I appreciate you. Thank you. We'll look forward to having you on again on Power 98.5 FM.